clock is officially ticking down. The rhetoric is heating up. This is simply about protecting Ohio's constitution. The state's special election on issue one, days away. The future of the state constitution literally hanging in the balance. And Ohioans should be upset. The outcome of this vote could impact families for generations. This is about truth telling. ABC6 is cutting through the noise to bring you the facts. Putting to bed the lie. Breaking down the numbers, helping you to understand what's at stake. That's how we determine who wins in ballot issues to this point. That's the majority. 111 years of doing this, the majority mm -hmm. rules, right? It's a hot button issue. Shame! Shame! Stirring plenty of passion on both sides. It's really about, do citizens have a say in government? ABC6 is getting in-depth insight crucial for voters. And there is a real power in talking directly to voters and taking an issue directly to the ballot. Are your voice, your future town hall, changing Ohio's constitution. Good evening, I'm Bob Kendrick, reporting from the Ohio State House Museum where you can see a display of the 1851 state constitution that's still in effect today. The display also points out the discontent that many Ohioans felt that the constitution didn't go far enough. And that led to a series of constitutional amendments in 1912 that, as the display says, sought to limit government corruption and inefficiency while returning power to the people. Well, one of the changes put Ohio in the minority of states that allowed citizens themselves to propose an amendment to the Constitution. Well, now, 111 years later, Issue 1 seeks to bring the process back closer to the way things were 112 years ago. Proposed amendments would need 60% of the statewide vote to pass. Currently, they need only a simple majority, or 50 plus one vote, to take effect. Petitioners would be required to get signatures from all 88 counties. Right now it's 44. As soon as those petitions are submitted, that's it. Current law allows 10 more days to get signatures if a group falls short. It seems like a lot of math, but it's actually simpler than it sounds. I got an explanation that may just help you out as well. We're here with our numbers expert, Dr. Raj Shaw from Math Plus Academy. Appreciate you coming in and making sense of this for Ohio voters. Yeah, it gets a little tricky. Mm -hmm. I, I like to think about it like this. We're trying to pass an issue, mm -hmm. right? Take a vote. It's like playing a game, really. You can imagine a game between you, Bob, me, Raj, okay. right? And in this game, let's imagine there's 100 points up for grabs. All right. And we play the game, you get 50 points, I get 50 points. Right. Who would you say wins this game? That's a tie. That's a tie. We can all agree this is a tie, right? Uh -huh. Okay, if you want to win, you're going to probably need a few more points. In fact, if, I get, if you got 51 and I got 49, now who wins? I win. Correct. And that's how we've been doing this for 111 years. Okay. Is that the majority rules. If you get one extra vote, boom, you win the game. Okay. Pretty straightforward. Now imagine we play this game again and you got 59 and I only get 41. That adds up to 100. Who wins this game? Me. Winner. Clearly. So with issue one, if it passes, we're actually going to change that. We're going to say that 59 isn't enough that you would actually need 60 points in this game to win. And that's what's at stake with this issue doing things. So you would win with 41 points. Yeah, just 41 for me to win. All right, well, there it is. The numbers explained by Dr. Raj Shah. Much appreciated. Thank you. This vote may have a more profound effect on Ohio than any other in the past century. With so much at stake, arguments for and against are passionate indeed. Here now are two opposing voices we've been hearing a lot from in the run-up to the special election. Well, what's being proposed here in Ohio is the most extreme um, uh, proposal in the nation to hobble uh, an initiated constitutional process. Mike Curtin is a former state lawmaker and longtime public affairs editor for the Columbus Dispatch. The point is we don't want to be California where every year we're considering another what they call proposition. Republican Secretary of State Frank LaRose is tasked with bringing issue one to a vote. He also supports the measure. We asked essentially the same questions to both men. Here now, you'll hear both for and against issue one, starting with why they think it would be good or bad for Ohio. Yeah, this is simply about protecting Ohio's constitution. 
the threshold to change laws will still be at 50% plus one. A simple majority after issue one passes will be able to uh, pass a initiated statute or to conduct a referendum to get rid of laws they don't like. Of course, all the power exists not here in Columbus, but with the citizens of our state. And so that simple majority is how we change laws. But to change our constitution, we should, as many other states have done, elevate that threshold to 60% and really require that signatures be gathered in all 88 counties. Ohioans have responsibly had and they've responsibly used the initiative process for 111 years. It was a right earned by our ancestors in the 1912 State Constitutional Convention. It is a tool to hold those in power accountable when they need to be held accountable. And this is a raw attempt by the politicians of the State House to take away that hard won right that Ohioans have responsibly used for 111 years. Well, a state constitution and a federal constitution are different documents with different purposes. Is the need for a state issue one supported by the fact that the U.S. Constitution is so much harder to amend? I think absolutely. It takes 75 percent of the states to change the U.S. Constitution. That means that you've got to build a consensus, a broad agreement, before you can change our nation's founding document. Contrast that. The state document, the state constitution, it's been amended almost 200 times. And again, its threshold for amending is the same threshold for passing just common day-to-day -day laws. And that is what needs to change. It's comparing apples and motorboats. Um, all state constitutions are much longer and much more detailed than the U.S. Constitution of necessity. The founders intended it that way. The framers of the U.S. Constitution intended to have a lean, spare document. We have the ninth oldest state constitution in the nation. It's an 1851 document, and we have to amend it from time to time to keep up with the times. When you look at that 1851 document, there's a lot of old, archaic, no longer relevant sections in it. We must update it decade by decade, as Thomas Jefferson taught. It was meant, it was designed to be a living document. And so for sponsors of uh, State Issue 1 to say it should more resemble the U.S. Constitution, they simply don't know what they're talking about. They don't understand federalism. State constitutions must be living documents. And back in November, you said if you raise the signature threshold, that would make it effectively harder for Ohioans to put an issue on the ballot. That would disadvantage those truly citizen groups that want to get out there with clipboards and make it happen. You may actually, your words comparatively, advantage the special interests because the special interests may be able to afford the million to one and a half million to hire more people with clipboards. Were you wrong? Not necessarily, but this was also not my decision. The state legislature chose to write the language that is now issue one. They're the ones that referred it to the ballot. It's their power to do that. Uh, I'm a fan of raising the threshold and leaving the signature, uh, raising the vote passage threshold and leaving the signature gathering threshold alone, but that wasn't the decision that was made by the state legislature. It's not insurmountable, however. What we're talking about is requiring signatures in all 88 counties because a change to the Ohio Constitution impacts all 88 counties. And so if you want to change our Constitution, if you want to propose a change to our Constitution, it's not too much to ask to gather signatures in all 88 counties, and it's just a little bit of extra work to get that done. If you have an 88 county signature requirement, mark my words, what you will have when people attempt to qualify initiated amendments for the ballot is extensive campaigns in a handful of counties, probably those smaller counties, to just say no to that petition. You know, just don't sign that petition. And with that kind of campaign, if it's successful, uh, you've allowed not only a tail to wag the dog, you've allowed the freckle on the tail of the dog to wag the dog. I guess I appreciate the analogy, but the, uh, uh, the, the great debate that goes on in any society is about what rules we want to change, what rules we want to keep the same. So let's take a small county. I think that the uh, signatures that you would need in a county like Vinton County would be like fewer than 200. If you can't find 200 people in the whole county that think that your idea is at least worth putting on the ballot, right? They're not saying I'd vote for it. They're just saying the people should be able to decide this. Then you probably have a pretty weak argument for making that issue uh, uh, you know, part of our Constitution. The proponents of that 88 county signature requirement know exactly what they're doing. It's meant to put a bullet through the head of the initiative process. How important is the abortion issue in the issue one campaigns? Abortion is not on the ballot on August 8th. Abortion will be on the ballot in November. Uh, the only thing on the ballot at, on August 8th is your right as an Ohio citizen to use the initiative process to place issues on the ballot 
to amend the Ohio Constitution if your fellow Ohio citizens agree. Uh, of course, for some, that may be the motivating factor, but it's certainly not the only factor. And this is one of the, 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 the real, I think, lies that's been told by the no on issue one crowd is they've tried to say that this is just exclusively about abortion. Well, that's one of many things that we, I don't want to see included in our state constitution. Some of the arguments for and against issue one from two men on the front lines of the debate. And a final thought from both. An Ohioan should be upset, they should be offended, and they should make sure they slam this thing down on August 8th. Something as consequential as a constitutional change should be elevated to a higher standard, and that's the simple matter that, uh, that we're debating here. Welcome back to Your Voice, Your Future, an ABC6 special in-depth look at State Issue 1. Well, we've just heard from prominent voices on both sides of the issue. Now let's bring in veteran political investigator Daryl Rowland for a fact check of what we've heard. Hi, Daryl. Hey, Bob. Both Mike Curtin and Franco Rose had some bold statements in our interviews with them. Let's fact check some of them. First, Mike Curtin had this to say about something Franco Rose said. He went through an entire year re-election campaign last year running for Secretary of State, Chief Elections Officer of this state, not uttering one word about this pressing issue. That's not true. Certainly, LaRose's campaign didn't emphasize his plan to change the Ohio Constitution, but he did outline it during an editorial board meeting shortly before the 2022 election with the Cleveland Plain Dealer and Cleveland.com. LaRose, on the other hand, went too far in blaming issue one opponents for emphasizing abortion. This is one of the, 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 the real, I think, lies that's been told by the no on issue one crowd is they've tried to say that this is just exclusively about abortion. Our founders. But the abortion issue is the centerpiece of the yes on issue one side's first TV ad. And LaRose himself had this to say to Seneca County Republicans in May. This is 100% about keeping a radical pro-abortion amendment out of our Constitution. The left wants to jam it in there this coming November. And so, yes, it's about abortion, but it's about so many other things as well. Perhaps the biggest factual dispute between LaRose and Curtin was over the impact of sharply increased signature requirements for citizens to put any proposed change of the Constitution on the ballot. Currently, a minimum number of signatures, equal to 5% of the votes cast in the latest election for governor, is required from 44 of Ohio's 88 counties. Issue one would mandate that amount from all 88 counties. And it's just a little bit of extra work to get that done. It's meant to put a bullet through the head of the initiative process. Who's right? We turn to two Ohioans well-versed in qualifying issues for the statewide ballot. One on the right, one on the left. Dave Zanotti, CEO of the American Policy Roundtable. Catherine Terser, Executive Director of Common Cause Ohio. If issue one passes, what is the prospect for future citizen constitutional amendments in Ohio? Well, I think it's not good. The only people that will be able to do this kind of citizen initiative are not the citizens of Ohio. They're going to be wealthy special interests. Hey, you certainly got both sides of the political spectrum there. Thanks. I was especially intrigued with Dave Zanotti because he challenged some of the perspectives of his fellow pro-life conservatives. Mm -hmm. Well, as always, thanks for keeping an eye on the facts for us, Daryl. Thank you. We have no doubt come to realize now that abortion is central to opposition or support for issue one. It's the gorilla in the room without actually being on the ballot in this special election. And that's why we think it would be valuable for you to hear both sides of the debate what supporters and opponents of an abortion rights amendment to the state constitution want you to know before you cast your ballot. We begin with Ruth Harmon. As a young woman, she terminated a pregnancy and now is a prominent pro-life voice. She supports issue one. What I've realized is that trying to erase um, a memory um, is really just living a lie. And it's a lie that keeps living until you decide to stop. And what I know was that um, what I believed um, an abortion would fix was a lie, because it doesn't fix it. Um, I will forever and always um, be someone who was pregnant and ended the, the pregnancy, um, and that doesn't go away. It was painful. And um, so, um, and a life is not, um, you know, being pregnant, an unplanned pregnancy does not ruin a life. So these were lies um, that are told in our culture, lies that I believed, lies that aren't true. 
And um, it was, it's been important for me um, as someone who has experienced an abortion to share the truth of the matter um, that, um, in fact, um, you know, life is precious and there are options, um, options like, you know, pregnancy decision health centers and um, that it won't ruin your life. <laughs> Children are a gift and they're wonderful. Um, and so um, this is about truth telling. Are you concerned that without issue one passing, that um, abortion rights are going to be enshrined in the Constitution? I'm very concerned um, ab about the fact that um, Ohioans predominantly care for life. And more importantly, I am concerned that our Constitution is being um, is being used as a tool to circumvent the legislative process. Dr. Anita Sumani is a Democratic state lawmaker and a longtime OBGYN physician. She opposes issue one. As far as patients go, so often people don't know. It's six weeks that they're pregnant. So if somebody has a heart condition, if somebody has um, a severe condition that's life threatening, and they don't know that they're pregnant before that six week mark, it's devastating. You know, we've had, we recently had a patient like that. She had a condition called primary pulmonary hypertension where it's a, over 50% mortality for mom if they carry a pregnancy. So the recommendation is almost always to um, terminate the pregnancy or to have a surrogate carry a pregnancy for you. And so when this patient, when <clears throat> she found out that she was pregnant, it was beyond six weeks. Um, again, not because of any fault of her own, but, but birth control fails. Birth control doesn't always work. And so she was forced to go to Michigan to have the termination. But then once she got to Michigan, the cost of having an abortion was almost prohibitive. These decisions should be left to the patient and the physician. We shouldn't be politicizing these decisions when it comes to at what point should you say that abortion should be illegal. So even though the, the push to talk about issue one in the context of abortion is there, it's much more about restricting the ability of citizens to change the Constitution. Now, it doesn't change the fact that at the State House, as a state representative, I can still change that Constitution with a 50 plus one, with a simple majority. So this law is very restricted to decreasing the voice of the average citizen, of the average Ohioan. And it's not just abortion. There's also an amendment legalizing recreational use of marijuana, something that has wider appeal now. But experts say the legislature wants to control how it happens. Across the street, the Ohio Chamber of Commerce is against another amendment raising the state's minimum wage to $15 in 2026. Former Republican Congressman Steve Stivers, who leads the chamber, calls it economically detrimental. The group getting signatures is targeting the November 2024 ballot. Uh, this is about more than just business interests. It's about all manner of other things. Again, right now it's a, 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 pro a proposal that would pertain to abortion. Uh, maybe somebody wants to do something about marijuana in the Constitution. It's important that if we're going to make a change to our state constitution that we have a broad consensus of Ohioans supporting it, not just a bare majority. When Abe Lincoln began his presidential campaign in September of 1859, he stood on those steps and he said, guard your constitution, you know, and be wary of people saying, we'll guard it for you, don't worry about it. Thanks for watching Your Voice, Your Future, Changing Ohio's Constitution. Some say it's the most significant vote in Ohio since the 1912 amendments. If you missed something, rewatch this on the ABC6 app, along with our other coverage of Issue 1. Remember, you can still cast an early ballot at your county's Board of Elections until 5 p.m. Sunday. And don't forget, Ohio has a new photo ID requirement when you vote in person. Polls are open from 6.30 a.m. till 7.30 p.m. on August 8th. Reporting from the Ohio State House, I'm Bob Kendrick. Good night.